Hi, welcome to another Element 14 road test. In this road test, we're going to be reviewing the TI Simple Switcher Evaluation Module from, of course, Texas Instruments. And what this is, is a 60 volt input, uh, two amp switch mode power supply module. Uh, it comes on a little evaluation board and uh, it's preset for 3.3 volt output but has a jumper on it so that you can up it to five volts. And what this thing looks like, where did I put it? There we go. Is um, straightforward, nice little board. Um, the great big item right in the middle there, or slightly off to the side, is the inductor. It's a, um, I'm not sure, we'll have a closer look later. Anyway, big inductor, little, little IC package. Uh, as I said, two amps rating and up to 60 volt input. The um, board is set for 3.3 volt nominal output, but it does have a jumper on here that you can plug in to allow you to set the output to five volts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it up to my uh, power supply. Uh, we're gonna start off feeding it probably something like, you know, 10 or 15 volts, um, stick a 10 ohm load on the output and see how clean it is. And then we're gonna start looking at varying the input uh, potentially measuring its conversion efficiency and seeing what its uh, output response is to changes of input load. And then after that, we're gonna go have a look at changing the output response, um, or sorry, testing the output response by putting a uh, dynamic load on there that would be uh, a power transistor with a small one ohm load and using my um, Agilent signal generator to control the step voltage from, you know, sorry, the step current from maybe one amp to two amps and back down to one amp to see how well it maintains the output voltage in, under those circumstances. So let's uh, get to the bench, hook it up and uh, see what it can do. Excuse my rather uh, cluttered bench. I actually have a number of projects on the go here right now. Um, so I've just cleared a bit of space around in the front here so that we can set this up. I'm using my uh, Keithley triple output power supply to supply the input volts to this on the um, top terminals and on the bottom ones is the V out. Have I got that the right way around? Uh, nope, sorry, the bottom one is the V in from the power supply. Make sure I get this the right way around when I'm measuring and checking things. And the top two terminals are the V out. And what I've done is I've um, put some heavy gauge wires and I'm feeding this output into a 10 ohm load. It's just a power, resistor here that's uh, normally can handle up to 10 watts so with a 5 volt output into here it's only going to be uh, half an amp so that's only going to be sitting at about two and a half watts which is well within its capabilities um, and we're going to be hooking it up to the oscilloscope so we'll have a look at those um, traces i've soldered on a couple of pins here so that we can actually um, get some readings directly on the board rather than trying to connect to the wires because that's not always a good thing to do when you're trying to measure the uh, board performance. Now, the uh, obviously the you know the big grounding leads here are going to be acting a little bit as an antenna, but we're not looking at um, RF or anything like that, so it shouldn't be too bad for interference. You know, anything we're going to see as ripple is probably going to be at the switching frequency. Um, we'll see if we can measure that. There should be one of these um, test pins that will show us the switching frequency and everything. I've put the jumper in to set the output to a nominal five volts. We will try and look at the three volt output as well. And so we're gonna be monitoring the input, comparing it with the output from a ripple. And when I vary the input on the Keithley power supply, we'll see what, if any, output um, effects there are. I'll not only have the um, three and a half digit multimeter that's on my oscilloscope monitoring the output voltage, but I'll hook up one of my four and a half digit bench digital multimeters as well. I do have a better power supply than that, but I haven't had a chance to verify its calibration yet. So um, I'm not gonna introduce that into this video for the moment. And it's, um, for this circuit, it's probably, you know, four and a half digit is probably gonna be more than accurate enough to be able to uh, test things here. And, you know, where necessary, when we start checking the switching response, uh, sorry, response to switching the load or the input uh, voltages, uh, the oscilloscopes would be better off to be able to see that anyway. We'll put it to AC coupling and look for the uh, transients when we start switching things around a bit. Um, the other part that we're going to use a little bit through the video is my, um, I've got these modules that I've made up. They've got power transistors on them uh, with a one ohm resistor and they make very good um, 
like dummy loads for uh, testing things like these power supplies because they're all they're all capable of taking a few amps and um, you know I can just drive the base of the of this transistor from my directly from my signal generator my uh, Agent 33622A, anything from very low frequencies up to um, over 100 megahertz. So we don't, you know, we're not going to take it up that high, but certainly we're going to be able to try um, introducing noise on the input, see what effect it has, and also um, vary the load on the output uh, using this and see what the step response is like um, in maintaining the output voltage at a steady state. So it'll be interesting to see how well that performs. Anyway, the first thing we're going to do is have a look at how well it maintains its output volts um, into the uh, 10 ohm load while I vary the input from um, whatever we determine to be the minimal setting up to the maximum of uh, 60 volts. So in order to do that, I will have to set my uh, Keithley power supply in series. The two outputs are only capable of 30 volts each. Um, and also um, the output of the switch mode power supply is going to be set to 5 volts. So we're not going to test its maximum load right away. We will do that once we hook up the um, electronic load to it. That way I can crank it up and down as much as I like. Uh, I don't have any um, other values other than the 10 ohm power resistor. So our initial test is just going to be testing with that. All right, so I have the power supply hooked up. It's turned on right now, but the output of the power supply is only currently set to four volts. And as you can see, um, the switcher does not do any boost conversion. It's only doing buck conversion. So our input has to be higher than the uh, desired output. If I actually pull the jumper off, it will probably um, happily switch down because it's running at four point one volt so if I take that off we we'll probably get the desired output there we go 3.33 volts so okay so everything's hooked up I've got um, currently half the supply voltage feeding into the switcher which is uh, 30 volts and my meter is reading 5.031 there are no trimmers to adjust the voltage on this but 5.031 is definitely well within one percent and easily within any specifications that you would need for a typical um, supply. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the critical thing here, of course, is that the output is stable, smooth um, over time and with temperature and things. So uh, we're drawing about a half an amp through our power supply um, into the resistor. So currently we have 30 volts set as our input to the switch mode um, IC and I have the 10 ohm load on the output with the 5 volt setting uh, jumped on here. So that means we've got a half an amp load at 5 volts, so we're um, dissipating about 2.5 watts into the load. Uh, that's a moderate load for this. As I said, it can go up to a 2 amp output. The voltage is already set at 30 volts. I'm going to slowly decrease the voltage on the input to the switch mode power supply uh, module and see where the 5 volts starts to drop off to see what its low threshold is and then we'll start working from there. Right now I'm not going to do any more than just monitor the uh, output on the LE, the meter to see where it drops off. After, later on we'll put it on the oscilloscope and see if any noise is being introduced at any of the particular settings. Later on, we'll put it on the oscilloscope as well. I mean, we're already hooked up to the oscilloscope, but we'll uh, show you the display to see if it's introducing any adverse noise or ripple as we approach the low threshold point. But for now, let's start decreasing the voltage and see uh, where we cut off. Excuse the noise, that's my uh, meter cutting off there on us. So I'm going to start reducing this now. Um, we're at 30 volts, so I'm going to come down and we're at 5.031 volts. So I'm down to 20 now. And we're still at 5.0. Okay, we're at 10 volts, so we haven't really shifted at all. It's still 5.0317. That's now at uh, 6 volts going into the switcher, and it's still quite happily delivering the 5.03. So I'm now going to go down in uh, 100 millivolt increments. So that's 5.9, um, 5.8, 5.7, 5.6, 5.7, 5.8. Three, just starting to drop off at 5.3 so that's not bad that's only 300 millivolts um, between the input and the output and it's still maintaining that at a half an amp 
If I go down now, it's starting to drop off. That's 5.2, and now we've dropped below the 5 volt mark. So that's pretty good. So I've introduced an extra meter into the mix here just so that we can monitor the current coming out as well while I vary the load just in case there's any effects. Um, the other thing to note too is that I've now connected my meter up um, across the output pins rather than across the load because I noticed that it was reading a little low and of course you know it's one of those classic mistakes that you make is you don't factor in for the length of the, the wire. Um, I was measuring across the load and I was getting roughly 5 volts, but of course, you know, measuring directly on the output of the switcher up here, you're actually getting slightly higher, 5.056. So that's what we're going to do going forward. Just to show you what difference that makes, um, while we're sitting here, I'm just going to connect it back up across the um, load again, which is just the other end of the two pieces of wire. And they're reasonably thick wires. But nevertheless, they're not uh, reading correctly. So the first thing is that's right across the load. And as you can see there, it's reading 4.977. But the other thing we've got in here now, of course, is this second multimeter, which is also going to be um, adding to the load. And there's going to be a burden voltage across it, which is going to drop the volts a little bit further even from that. So if I take my uh, negative lead and measure on the other side of the meter here, you can see what the bird, how many volts we're dropping across the meter, first of all. So we've got uh, 60 odd millivolts being dropped across the uh, meter. And if I hook up back to here now, all right, that's reading 5.047. But of course, I haven't got rid of all the wiring. Now, if I come back over on directly onto the output now of the switcher, um, we're back up to 5.057. So that's uh, another 10 millivolts that we've uh, got back and accounted for in the wiring drop. So need to pay attention to that if you're trying to do any precision measurements. Of course, if you're just checking a power supply that's going to be driving uh, a basic light or some other circuit, then it probably wouldn't matter too much. But as soon as you start getting into higher currents, it will become significant. And if I was running this at about the full load of 2 amps, which we'll be doing later, uh, it will become significant. So anyway, let's start cranking these uh, volts around again, and we'll see how well this tracks. So right now, of course, I'm sitting at uh, 500 and 10 millivolt load with the 5.057 volts um, on the output and on the input I've got 5.3 volts with um, 508 um, milliamps so you can see here that the switcher is not having to do very much work at all it's only going from 5.3 to 5.0 um, so it's having to drop it less than one percent which means it's um, almost just sitting there static. Um, so anyway, let's start cranking the volts back up again and we'll see if there is any effect on the output current. So we'll just assume it's 5 point, uh, 510 and 505 on the volt. So let's just crank this up to this max and see if it has any effect whatsoever. And we're up to seven volts, eight volts, nine. So we're having no effect whatsoever, up to 15 volts to 21 volts. So from a fairly static, I mean, it's not. I'm not changing this rapidly at all, but uh, from an input variation, the output is staying rock steady, which is pretty good, and as, as we would have expected. Um, drop that back down to 6 volts. So I'm going to key in the 30 volts now instead of um, slowly ramping it up. So there's 30 volts now, and I don't see any variation. Let's go back to 6, nothing back up to 30 there's nothing there either so that's good let's uh, see what it's like when we up it to 60 volts okay I've just reconfigured the um, power supply to output up to 60 volts by putting the two channels in series so uh, currently it's sitting at uh, 30 volts I'm still drawing the half amp load off of the switcher and it's still outputting 5 volts nicely and there you go the 5.1. So I'm just going to bang it straight to um, increments of 10 volts. So we're going to go to 40 volts now on the power supply and we'll see what happens here if anything. So not one little change. Now obviously the output current now from the power supply is only down to 76 milliamps. Uh, at 40 volts, uh, even though we're delivering 5 amps over here, because the switcher has now got a lot of volts to be able to convert into the, 
uh, do a power conversion on for the output so it's not having to draw very much at all from the load so let's go up to uh, 50 volts that's set now and still no difference so let's go to the maximum that the power supply can do and also the maximum of the chip so i don't know if it's getting warm or not shouldn't be no nope. so 5.055 and still 5100 on the nose so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to drop this thing um, right from 60 volts on the input i'm going to drop it down straight to uh, 6 volts on the input we know that it was working at 6 volts quite happily when we were down there so let's see if anything gets noticed or if it gives any hiccups going straight to 6 volts from this so didn't see anything whatsoever happening there so that's pretty good um, we'll do a little bit of calculations on power efficiency so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down some numbers um, as we go through this and then I will uh, tabulate them in a spreadsheet and include them in the video so that we can see in a minute all right so let's quickly run through this um, I've got six volts in at the moment and I'm drawing uh, 0.456 amps so I'm just going to write these down into a notepad uh, 0 0.456 and on the output of course we've got 5103 uh, 5.103 and we have 5.056 volts all right so i'm going to up it to 10 volt input uh, see what current we're drawing not one volt 10 volts so you've got 5056 still and we've got 5103 still the difference now is uh, 9.998 in and we're drawing 276 milliamps so let's crank it up to 15 volts and 5055 and 5103 so they're still reading the same on the output and we've got 16 volts at 188 milliamps this time sorry 15 volts and 188 milliamps so it's up it to 20 after 20 i'm going to go up in tens so that's uh 20 now so we're still 5056 and 5103 and at 20 volts we've got 143 milliamps that's got to 30 volts and at 30 volts we've got point yeah we've got 98 milliamps our um, volts are still running exactly 5055 5103 5056 so that's output's not changing at all so 30 and 98 so it's 30 and 0 0.098 let's go up to 40 volts so no difference on the output 40 is drawing 76 milliamps let's go up to 50 it's been an interesting profile to see how efficiently this runs with a very high input compared to the output so at 50 volts in we're drawing 63 milliamps and the output has not changed at all so now we're going to go to 60 volts on the input and we're drawing 54 milliamps so that's gone all the way up on that we will do some load testing by varying the output so now what I want to do, um, now that we've got those figures, I'll include them a little bit in the uh, video so we can see what the efficiency is like um, when I edit it. But for now, I'm going to just switch to the scope and see what it's like uh, on the output and transient response to a large shift on the input voltage. So what you're seeing here on the oscilloscope is the step response for an input volts of six volts and i'm jumping it straight to 60 volts and the top trace is the step of the input volt it starts off at six and goes up to 60 and you can see right now it's reading 59.81 so close enough to 60 volts the bottom one i've um, put this 200 millivolts per division on uh, channel two and switched it to ac coupling because what i want to be able to do is detect any spikes and if i have it on dc coupling there is not enough um, offset to be able to get the uh, scope onto the display, I don't think. I'll have a quick look to see if I can adjust it, but I don't believe so. Anyway, what you can see here right now is that when the input was on a low voltage, you can see the uh, noise here. I put a 20 megahertz filter on it because I want to eliminate a lot of the um, environmental noise from in my lab with these uh, LED lights and various other switch mode power supplies that are around here. 
uh, and you can see there's very little noise here. It's 20 millivolts per division, so it's probably just a couple of millivolts of noise. And when it switches up to 60 volts, you can see that the noise increases on the output of the power supply uh, module. So that's uh, it's not a huge increase, and there certainly doesn't appear to be any um, spike where the output jumps up or drops down or anything like that. So that's pretty good. So I've just discovered a very nice feature of the MDO305 4 Tiktronics oscilloscope. Um, adjusting the vertical position of the channel to input, I was not able to get it to come onto the display. But if uh, in the menus for channel two, when I hit more, um, there's actually an offset that you can adjust. And what I've done is by adjust using switch button A, uh, right here, I've actually been able to apply a five, a full five volt offset to bring the uh, channel two into the center of the display, which is quite good. So let's see if we can um, actually see what's going to happen now when we use this. Because I think if that's done what I think it has, um, I've not often seen that with a display, uh, with an oscilloscope to be able to do that. Uh, certainly seem to be twiddling the uh, normal position offset forever without it actually getting very far off the screen. So let's see if this will actually uh, capture my transient response. I need to put the trigger back uh, to where I had it so that I can trigger properly, of course, to normal mode. So we'll get that off the display and let's set this up. My input is set to six volts now and we'll set this for single shot. So let's just uh, go now and we're gonna step it up straight to 60 volts and there's the trigger so that's um pretty good so as you can see here the channel 2 has stayed like just like when we had it ac coupled um channel 2 has managed to stay no shift whatsoever and the input has gone from 6 volts up to 60 volts and right here with channel 2 you can see it hasn't deviated at all a little bit of extra noise but absolutely no uh shift in actual uh, output voltage so that's pretty good I'll be uh, quite happy to have one of those chips in my um, equipment with a performance like that, but of course that's only part of the story. So let's see if we can um, now look at varying the output load for a uh, various given inputs and see how well that performs. So let me just uh, stop filming for a moment and set that up.